Longhorn Nation, what's going on? Your boy's back, uh, BJ with Bad Talks. It's been a year already, um, or eight months at least since uh, the Sugar Bowl. And um, man, I tell you, uh, what an ending to last year. What a good year we had uh, to, to end the season and uh, ready to spring in, springboard into 2019 uh, football season. I'm super excited to be back. Those of you that uh, subscribe to me and send, been sending me messages, asked for videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, send a shout out to my boy Brady Jet that's deployed right now. Uh, keep your head down, buddy, and I love you, man. I can't wait till you get back. And he's been asking me for these videos. Matter of fact, he's asked me this morning, and I told him I was getting ready to head back to the house and, and get that taken care of so I can send it to him. Uh, send some shout outs to my boy in the comments because he'll read them. Uh, he's deployed for his first time, and uh, um, he's. Uh, you know, doing what uh, we've done for a long time. So I appreciate the support. Uh, those of you that don't know me, if you're new to the channel, again, my name is BJ uh, with Bad Talks. Um, and what I do is I just talk Texas football. I don't script a whole lot. I did jot a couple things down, but uh, right now I'm just gonna do a preview of, of the summer uh, and spring and fall camp. And then uh, we'll talk about offense, defense a little bit. And then next week, we'll talk about Louisiana Tech pregame. And then I'll do a postgame Louisiana Tech video. So you'll start getting two videos a week. Uh, I'd like to keep the video between 15, 12 to 15 minutes. May go a little bit longer today. I'll try not to because I, I get lost after about 16, 17 minutes when I'm watching somebody else's video. Because uh, I'm always watching uh, Texas videos. Uh, but shoot, where do we even start? Um, Sugar Bowl champs. I mean, what? From losing to Maryland week one to Sugar Bowl champs is, was a huge step. Um, Coach Tom Herman's got this team uh, moving in the right direction, and, and that's really all you can ask for. Um, Sugar Bowl wasn't our goal, though, so it, it looks like this team isn't content with, with being Sugar Bowl champs. Um, our goal, Texas goal, was to win the Big 12 and, and then hopefully get in the playoffs and, and play for a national championship as a dream. Uh, Texas beat Oklahoma in, in October last year. I was there, 50-yard line, 37 rows up. One of the best experiences of my my football career. Uh, I mean, it was an outstanding game, and, and Texas won that. But they lost, uh, I guess, the one that really matters is the Big 12 championship game to Oklahoma. And um, I think they could very easily won it, but they didn't. Um, and then went on and played Georgia in the Sugar Bowl and, and slapped Georgia, Georgia around for a good three hours. So that was fun. Um, we'll talk about the spring first. Um, no serious injuries in the spring, it seems. Um, a lot of uh, freshmen came in early. A few freshmen came in early. And it, Jordan Winnington is the one that comes to mind. Um, I got a brother-in-law, ex-brother-in-law that lives in Cuero. And, and he talks about uh, George's family, talks to him about uh, George loving it and, 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 and UT. And he's being treated like a Ricky Williams and a Cedric Benson and, and a uh, uh, Jamal Charles and, and folks like that. And since I did say Cedric Benson, you know, rest in peace, man. We lost a legend uh, this week to a motorcycle accident. So keep his family and, and keep his friends and his ex-teammates and the Texas alum and everybody in their prayers. Uh, such a tragedy, such a young man, um, a young life gone like that. Uh, but, you know, uh, we'll keep, keep his family in our prayers. Um, but it seems like uh, spring went fine. Watch the spring game, little... Vanilla, as usual, uh, but there was talent all around the ball. I mean, people flying around the ball. Uh, I think it looks like the offense is probably going to carry Texas a little bit this year. Uh, Texas lost eight defensive starters uh, from last year. Uh, Big 12 uh, defense alignment, all Big 12 defense alignment. Charles Minahu is now with the Houston Texans. Um, Gary Johnson, linebacker, is now with the Washington Redskins. Um, Boyd is now with the Minnesota Vikings. These guys are at db so we're gonna have uh <clears throat> brand new corners uh, but we got some we got some 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 young some youth coming back but a little bit of, of experience so i think we'll be fine um it sounds like uh fall camp has been going well um they, they've done a couple of scrimmages and i think the offense uh from watching all access and reading some forum stuff seems like the offense has won uh both uh scrimmages uh but that's to be expected i mean we got a lot of people back on the offense uh, got a quarterback and Sam Ellinger back. Uh, Keontae Ingram running back is back. Um, uh, Colin Johnson's back on the outside. Uh, Brennan Eagles, and we'll talk about those guys uh, coming up. Um, and I think the offense is going to be the difference of, of a successful season this year. And the reason I say that is because we got 
eight starters on defense missing. Um, but we'll start at the quarterback. I mean, Sam Ellinger's back. What can you say? Uh, the kid's on the Heisman watch list. Uh, he's going to be a Big 12 All-American, uh, barring injury. Uh, the kid's tough. He's smart. Um, he's He's got the it factor, it, what they like to call it in, in football these days. Um, the kid is a leader of this football team. And as long as Sam Ellinger can stay healthy, um, this team has a shot to win every football game that they play. Um, I didn't say I'm going to predict that. I'm just saying that they, they got a shot to win every football game. And and then, of course, a couple young um, backup quarterbacks. If he goes down, uh, I think they'll be I think they'll be fine. Uh, running back, you got sophomore uh, Keonta Ingram back. I know he tweaked a knee in, in one of the scrimmages, and it seems like he's going to be able to be ready to go for week one. Uh, and then – Jordan Wennington, a true freshman coming in, absolute stud. I mean, I watched him score those six touchdowns in the state championship game last year live, and it was one of the best times, uh, high school football experience, uh, performances I've ever seen. It was phenomenal, uh, pretty good. And then you got third string running back and young, man. This this kid was in an interview the other day, and they're like, man, with the they're asking him, you know, with the transfer portal and all that, and you don't get a whole lot of playing time. You were, uh, you were a good running back. Did you ever think about transferring and – he said, man, my job is not to worry about playing time. My job is to do what my coaches tell me to do. My job is when I do get playing time to get in and do my job to help my team win. And that's the mentality that Tom Herman has ex expressed into these young men th these days. And it's it's pretty awesome to watch and, and hear these guys talk like that. Wide receivers, possibly the best um, unit we have in any room. Uh, I mean, you got Colin Johnson back, you know, Big 12 All-American. He, he is... I mean, six seven. The dude is a monster out there on the edge, and he's going to be hard to guard. Uh, and then you got Brennan Eagles, uh, which is just as big. And then you got Malcolm Epps, and these guys are huge wide receivers. And then the speed comes in with Devin Duvernay and the freshman Jay. And Devin Duvernay, by the way, don't drop passes. Hundred percent catch rate in all of his games. That's unbelievable. He doesn't drop balls. Uh, and then of course, like I said, Jake Smith out of Arizona came in. Watching the scrimmage, he broke down the sideline. Somebody, I, I couldn't tell who he was, tried to make a tackle, and he just threw him off and was gone. The no catching Jake Smith, when he gets in the open, that kid is long gone. He's super fast, and again, he's a true freshman. And then you got John Burt, uh, wide receiver, another speedy guy. He's only the Big 12, uh, 110 hurdles champ. So the dude can fly. I mean, these this wide receiver group is, is probably, possibly one of the best Texas has ever had. And, and then moving on to O-line, we got a, a Georgia Tech transfer come in. He was a ACC a first team All American uh, for Georgia Tech. Of course, it's a little bit different offense than Georgia Tech, but it seems like he's doing good. This is possibly, uh, again, the best offensive line that Coach Tom Herman's had since he's been there. Um, and it's Texas fans are ready to have a good offensive line and ready to have a good run game because uh, we just haven't had that in uh, years past. And it's probably the best. Offensive line we've had since Colt McCoy is gone, since that team uh, went to the national championship in 09, 08, 09. Um, so moving over to the defense, like I said, re replacing eight starters. But I really like the guys up front. we got some big guys, and these guys played. You know, Asher Coburn, Graham, Ojimo, uh, Malcolm Roach is a, is a captain. Uh, these guys are, are going to be tough to block up front. Uh, they just are. Uh, I like Ojimo. He's a, he's a big guy, long guy, lanky guy. And of course, uh, Graham is um, is is gonna stand out too. And then of course, linebackers. We got a Delhi didn't play last year a whole lot at linebacker, uh, but the kid he he actually slimmed up some when I saw him last year. He was real muscled up and big and thick. And I thought, man, he's a little thick for a linebacker, but uh, he slimmed up a little bit. And the kid is rocked out, man. I mean, Yancey McKnight got that kid looking like Mike Tyson out there. A uh, good looking kid. And then of course, Jeffrey McCullough is returning. Uh, he's a senior, so. That kid, and then Joseph Osai, he's he's predicted as a newcomer of the year in the, in the Big 12. Even though he played last year, uh, that kid's going to be uh, tough to stop as well. And then our DBs, man, I really like. They're talking about on third down some of the defensive packages that uh, Todd Orlando has put in, having three defensive linemen and eight defensive backs on a third down play. Uh, that's phenomenal. That's how big and strong and fast these DBs are. I mean, you got Brandon Jones back. Brandon Jones very easily could be a Thorpe Award winner. Definitely a Thorpe Award finalist. Uh, the kid is a stud. He's a five-star recruit coming out of high school a few years ago. Now he's a senior. 
uh, faced some injuries last year, decided to, he could have went pro and, and got drafted, uh, but he decided to come back for a senior year, graduate from Texas, and, and he again, he's going to be a top-notch defensive back, super fast. And then uh, alongside of and Jordan Stearns, uh, he's only the uh, freshman All-American uh, and uh, Big 12 freshman of the year uh, last year. Um, and he didn't get to play the Sugar Bowl because he got hurt. Uh, but that kid flies around the ball. He will hit you, and he will. He can pick the ball. He can do whatever you want. He can cover. So we got two dynamic safeties on the back end, and then our corners are fighting it out. Uh, and you got Brown, Jamison, Foster, Green, Overshone. These guys are just uh, all trying to figure out who can play safety and corner and nickel, and they play a rover and uh, Joker and all this different stuff that Todd Orlando likes to do, and it's it's pretty cool to see uh but one of my favorite dbs that we have other than our safeties on the back end um is of course i like foster but jameson tyler owens is a young freshman to come in and he was i sent a picture to my buddy and tyler owens was standing next to brandon foster i mean uh standing next to brandon jones and looked three or four inches taller than him and was thick his arms were big i was like man it's a linebacker and i got to look and it was tyler owens a safety i mean this kid um it's huge and Yancey again Yancey McKnight is just all over these guys it's just written all over these guys and again if you don't know Yancey McKnight he's a strength coach uh for Texas but Texas has talent all over the field and they really do uh so I'm ex I'm so excited for, uh, for the future for Texas I think most Texas fans are after reading these forums and, and Twitter and stuff like that um and one reason is Tom Herman and his staff is recruiting at an elite level I mean Herman's been talking about elite 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 He's definitely recruiting at an elite level, uh, and it's fun to watch. I mean, this will be if we can get – we're number six right now, but if Texas can get in the top five, I mean, that's three straight years in the top five. Uh, that stuff that Georgia and Alabama and Clemson and these guys are doing, um, that's, that's, that's how to get elite and start recruiting elite. Uh, and I think Tom Herman's ran away with this state. Uh, I know there's some people in Maroon down the road that live in uh, Collie Station that uh, – that beg to differ because they think uh, Jimbo is the greatest thing since sliced bread. When uh, Tom Herman's gonna run him out of the state, Jimbo possibly could be at LSU in the next couple years, but we'll talk about that and laugh at y'all about that later. Um, but we'll go over a few things that I've noticed uh, just by reading and um, keeping up with uh, Texas forums and listening to radio and stuff like that. Is and I've already said earlier, but Sam Ellinger is our leader, no question about it. Uh, he was chosen as a captain, uh, one of the captains. Uh, but he's a leader of this team, and we'll go as far as Sam leads us. Um, that, that's, that's, that's a fact. Uh, second, dudes are huge. They're fast. They're big. They look strong. We got some good-looking kids. I always like to compare how big Texas players look to, like, Alabama and Clemson because they got some big boys. Uh, and this year, uh, they're Texas second to none when it comes to size and, and speed. Um, and all these guys are saying all the right things. I watch all the interviews, Shackelford and – uh, Sam Ellinger and Colin Johnson and Keontae Ingram, all these guys are talking in these interviews and they're all saying the right thing. Hey, we're not content with the Sugar Bowl and we want to win the Big 12. Um, get a little chip on the shoulder uh, this year to come back and prove that uh, Texas really is back. I'm tired of hearing that as Texas back, Texas back. Texas didn't go nowhere. Sorry to tell you, Texas didn't go nowhere. They weren't winning every game. They weren't in the playoffs. I get all that, but Texas ain't going nowhere. We're not anywhere. Texas is still here, and we're here to stay. We're not going anywhere. Um, but young talent all over the field. Future is bright, like I said earlier. Um, and hats off to Yancey McKnight and the strength uh, staff. They got these guys looking huge, and, and I've said that three or four times uh, already. And lastly, uh, Louisiana Tech is in eight days, uh, and we get to see some, some burnt orange. I believe it comes on the Longhorn Network at 7 o'clock. Uh, so I'll be sitting tight, ready to watch uh, the game. And so what I do is I'll come back next week and I'll I do some study and some little film study and stuff on Louisiana Tech. I know they got a returning uh, quarterback. I think he's a senior, uh, and then a good wide receiver that's coming back. So uh, uh, we'll talk a little about that next week, and then uh, we'll talk about kind of what I'm hearing Tom Herman and these guys talk about leading up to uh, Louisiana Tech. Um, and we won't talk about week two until week two, and you know who I'm talking about. Uh, but it's good to be back. It's good to be uh, on here again. I've been trying to get on. I've been so busy. You know, football started with my boys. You all know I coach uh, my boys. So that started up. Uh, so keep my players and my, my, my kids and all of them in your prayers, if you don't mind. 
I really appreciate it. Uh, keep all the veterans out there in your in your prayers. All the ones we got deployed, keep them in your prayers. Um, and and just know that um, there's somebody always out there for you if you need help. Um, I love you guys. I appreciate it, Longhorn Nation, for tuning in. Uh, leave some comments. Let's talk about it. If you like the video, uh, leave some comments. Hit like. If you don't like it, hit down. Hit the thumbs down and tell me why you don't like it. Um, if you're an Aggie or you're a West Virginia Aggie uh, or any of them and you get on here and comment and tell me you don't like it because I'm a Texas fan, well, that's not changing. But if you get on here and tell me that you don't like uh, certain things that I do, um, you don't like certain content that I cover, and that's fine. Just get on here and talk to me about it, and, and, I'll, and I'll conversate back. I'll always be respectful, for you, respectful to you as long as you're respectful to me. Um, I appreciate everything, and let's go win us a game. I'll be back next week and talk about Louisiana Tech. Hook them. Thank you for listening today. Tune in next week for the preview of Louisiana Tech versus Texas Longhorns, 7 p.m. on the Longhorn Network. Hook them.